Hi everyone, Megathony Wave Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of the new blank Banshee record, Mega. Mega, 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 Mega. Blank Banshee is What the fuck? Did you hear that? Dude, it happened again. What the fuck? Blank Banshee is a Vancouver, British Columbia based uh, music producer who pioneered the crossbreed genre of vaporwave and trap. He put them together and created Vapor Trap. His first album, known as Blank Banshee Zero, was released in 2012. A year later, his second album, Blank Banshee One, was released in 2013. And then something weird happened. Uh, Blank Banshee disappeared for like three years and nobody knew what he, he was doing, nobody knew where he was, nobody knew if he was alive, nobody even knew if he was real. Because Blank Banshee has a really good visual presence on the internet. So within those three years, Vaporwave, the virus that started off as a very indie underground sub-genre movement, suddenly blew up and was everywhere. Everyone, like, no, like, don't get all crazy. Vaporwave's mainstream as fuck now. Everyone knows what Vaporwave is. Mainstream artists are totally ripping off Vaporwave aesthetic for all their, like, stuff. Like, have you even paid attention? With viral hits such as Simpson Wave taking the internet by storm, check out uh, Sunday School and feeling good. Shouts out to Lucian Hughes and Cogmid. Those are my two favorite Simpson Wave stuff. Um, they used a lot of Blank Banshee's music in there, and Blank Banshee literally exploded with everyone. Blank Banshee even had several mutated uh, meme mutations with his Laura Croft head, so like, if you see one of these memes that I'm throwing on the screen, um, they're Blank Banshee inspired. Uh, Blank Banshee uh, released his latest album, not called Blank Banshee 2, a spiritual successor to 1 and 0. However, this is more of like a, a, an entirely different album. It's called Mega. And in today's video, I'm going to review it for you. Is Mega good? I don't know. Let's experience this journey together. Like all of Blank Banshee's albums, he has this consistency where he starts off with the opening track, which is like the intro and an outro, and then there's 15 tracks all together. And he, uh, I, what I like about that is he's being consistent with all three albums. All of them have 15 tracks, intro, outro, and everything. Consistency. You get points for consistency. The album opens up with the track BIOS. For those of you who don't know what BIOS means, it stands for Basic Input Output Systems. And I'll show you a basic input-output system, if you know what I mean. This opening track, you know, rehashes all of Blank Banshee's styles that he's known for. And what I really like about this is it's like you're turning on a really old computer, or a really future computer, or it's like you're putting a disc into a PlayStation and, like, you're playing, like, this JRPG, and that's what plays at the beginning where it says, like, new game and continue, and you're clicking back and forth. I really like those vibes. So the next track is My Machine. It starts off right off the bat. You're like fucking just running and it's like the 80s and there's neon like lights everywhere and there's like this guy just screaming at you. Um, I don't know who this guy is, but I feel like Blank Banshee sampled him before or he is Blank Banshee and that's him trying to f like put his toes into like the vocal recording mix of everything. But like the guy's voice is kind of weird. Um, it sounds kind of like, like an anime main character protagonist is like, Gah? what do you mean your power level? Like he has like that voice, you know what I mean? You you'll hear it when you hear it. And it's like, where am I running? Where am I going to? And then like you realize why you're running because in the next track, it's called Frozen Flame, which is an obvious reference to Chrono's Cross. For those of you who don't know, Chrono's Cross is in my top favorite 10 games I've ever made of all times. This is a good game. It's really pretty, it's beautiful. Um, this album actually has a lot of vibes that sound just like Chrono's Cross. And he even samples uh, Chrono Trigger, which is a sequel, in uh, some of his later tracks. But like, you realize why you're running and you have this frozen flame artifact and it's so beautiful. And like, this track is kind of like you admiring your, your, like, uh, your, your treasure. Also warning, this, this track has cop sirens, so if you're afraid of the police, like I am, don't listen to this track. I mean, you could, but um, you'll hear sirens and it'll spook you. So yeah, after you get the frozen flame, like uh, the next track is called Gunshots, and I imagine that the main character of this video game suddenly gets caught by the police, and then the police are like taking him in and questioning him, and they're taking photographs of him. There's even lyrics that uh, kind of state that whole thing. It's like, hold up your metal for the camera and take a shot or something like that. So like, I, it, it has like this really interesting vibe. And then this this track made my whole album experience just hearing that crescendo in choir sound. It's like, ah. Uh...
that uh, that gave me musical frisson. So thank you for giving me an ear orgasm, BB. Um, blank banshee short, BB. I'll call you BB for the rest of this. Uh, um, so yeah, after gunshots, you somehow manage to escape uh, prison, and now you find yourself in a giant jungle where there's just a bunch of megaflora everywhere, which is the name of the track. This one is probably the most commercial, pop-friendly track on the album because it kind of sounds like something you you would hear Justin Bieber singing to with those like fucking Nintendo sixty four pan flutes like that everyone's doing. Have you noticed that all pop music is like bum bum bum, and then they have like a vocal melody or a line that's like. Well, it, it basically sounds like that, and it, but it's Blank Banshee style, so it's really good. So you find yourself in like the middle of this like big jungle, and you're just like going through the jungle, and there's all these flora and fauna and tropicalness, and then you come across this gigantic just temple in the middle of the jungle, and it's like the water temple. So then the next level is, is called Echo Jams. I mean, not Echo Jams. Fuck. What's it called? Yeah, so it's called Echo Chamber, which is literally just like a water temple kind of instrumental. And one one of the main reasons I vibe with this is you can hear like the atmospheric like jungle life in the background. Like you hear like uh, like just sounds of life and like you're in like this gigantic ancient water temple and there's like a giant crystal like in the center and you have to solve all these puzzles just to touch it. And then when you finally do touch it, it goes on to the next track. So the next track is called Holographiti, and that is, I guess, when you touch the water crystal, and then the water crystal turns into a gigantic, like, eight-armed goddess, and she turns and looks at you, and she's like, shut the fuck up and listen! And then that transfers you into an entirely different world where it's, like, kind of, like, kind of cheesy, but it's also kind of, like, super, uh... I think Blank Banshee actually sampled, like, an old platforming game, and, like, you're suddenly, the water temple turns into, like, a sandy, dusty, dry-ass fucking desert with, like, fucking Aladdin-ass fucking chromatic scale stuff is be like duh, 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 duh. and you realize you're not in the same place you are but you're actually like 10,000 years in the future and you kind of have like that like samurai jack vibe and then like the next track is called uh Xenos I believe which is the your character coming into like this future realm and having future shock and one one thing I like about Blank Banshee's style is he's able to create the sort of chaos while having a still rhythmic flow so like it doesn't get too like crazy where it's like it suddenly like hurts your ears or you can't feel the flow like Blank Banshee's doing like a bunch of just crazy uh you know, um, sound manipulation, but there's still a flow and a rhythm to it, so, like, you can still dance to it, you know what I mean? And you're basically halfway through the album now. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, this album is short. Every track is about two minutes long, um, which isn't that bad because none of the... Uh, the album, none of the songs repeat, and that's something I hate about music now, is, like, if it repeats more than four bars, I'm like, I can't listen to this, I'm sorry, like, I can vis visually see the bars that you just copied and pasted, and I don't like that shit. Blank Bashy makes sure every single moment is different, and I admire that about him. So let's take a break for our commercial sponsor, uh, Doritos. I, I sure do love cheesy, uh, squares. All right, so the next track, Sand Timer, just gave me major fucking nostalgia boners right off the bat. I mean, he samples uh, Quarters of Time from Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger is, if you don't know, my favorite game of all time. I play it at least once a year, and I still cry and get emotional over it. So as soon as I heard those, bum, 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 I fucking all over, you know what I mean? So thank you, Blank Banshee, for giving me that uh, feeling of... Uh, that longing for a childhood that is fucking memories and probably isn't even the same anymore because I'm already getting old. So in the track Sound Timer, I believe the character's coming to terms with living in like a future world or whatever. Of course, this isn't what he intended. This is just my vision of it. So if, if you feel that uh, cool, if you don't... I like the IDM kicks in that song. They're like, boo, 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 brrr. Like he, like he like puts them really fast, great, like this nice wall of sound that doesn't like fucking hit you right away, but like... You'll hear it when you hear the album. The next track, Hungry Ghost, is uh, a favorite amongst everyone for just having a weird title. And I can see that like in some of the comments and stuff. Uh, Hungry Ghost, to me, could mean many things. Could it mean the ghosts that are chasing Pac-Man because they are hungry? Could it stand for the Chinese Buddhist tradition where family members leave out food for their ancestors in hopes that they're hungry so that they can eat it and go on to the afterlife or some shit like that? But this song just sounds like a mumble rap fucking Xanaxed out, fucking reverbed ass, auto-tune ass beat that like one of those fucking rappers would rap on. But I still admire it and 
there's even some choppy stuff. What I like is it's extra reverberated, extra uh, delayed, and that's why it's called Hungry Ghost. So after you feed the ghost, you enter the web ring. And what is the web ring? It's probably a portal. It's probably a, a ring that has a bunch of webs in it. But this song made my nipples pointy because I know there's an Earthbound sample at the beginning. When I heard that, I was like... The track also samples some like really interesting anime vocals. I know they're from like a serious anime where it's like either it's Akira or Princess Mononoke or something, but I've I've heard those like oh, before. One thing I like about BB's work is his use of sampling, his use of like stereo panning stuff. Like that's something I've always really admired about him. About you, I mean, if you're watching, and you never know, people always watch the randomest shit. After hopping into the web ring, you end up in this alternate reality where you see like this gigantic fucking sword and you're like, damn, that's a cool sword. And that's like the meteor blade. I believe this track was also used as a promo for this album. And the character in my hypothetical album journey sees this, the blade and he's like, I can feel the power. And then like he, he goes and, and like touches it and grabs it. And uh, this, this track also uses a lot of like those... Uh, I want to say like Arabic kind of scales are like those Indian atonal chromatic ladies that go like <laughs> like I like that I'm not gonna lie I really like that singing and when he puts that in there it's like I could really feel the otherworldliness of this blade so once you get the meteor blade you find out that uh, the true power wasn't inside the blade but it was inside you the whole time and that's when the track Juno plays which is kind of like uh, the happier version of that uh, the previous track and then it like it transports you to like this island beach theme so after Juno you're walking through these pretty little saturated islands filled with various life and whatnot I think they're called our our arpeologicals arpeggios when there's a bunch of that's how I imagined it and it's called Cyrilline which I believe is another Kronos cross reference there's, it's super bright and airy like the strings are just like really percussive and what I like about the this track is the high ends like just really like resonating and there's like really pretty strings and sitars this album has a very interesting eclectic uh, it, it's like it's using a bunch of styles of music all together and putting it into one and I really admire that and then you're done with the album the last track Exos comes out and it's like this very patty atmospheric kind of like it's like the blank bashy he uploads stuff on youtube and you should check those out i really love his 3d visuals uh there's one where it's like the waterfall and i imagine that this is like a continuation of that like you see the waterfall and then you walk towards the waterfall then you touch the waterfall and then it's relaxing and then the album's over so it's like okay um, y yay there's no like big crescendo like this album to me starts off really big and then it kind of just, if you've heard it, you probably know what I'm feeling. Um, but other than that, I really love Blank Banshee's work. I've, for real, Blank Banshee inspired a lot of the work that I do now. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of fanboying over Blank Banshee, but like to be critical of the art, like that's kind of how I feel about it. Whereas um, his previous work still stands up today, like I still listen to it occasionally. The whole album is overly compressed, which is something that I know a lot of people get mad at, but I love good loud albums. That's like the thing is like, I like when music just pops and hits you in the face. And like a lot of these new uh, rhythmic electronic music beats, that's what I'm looking for. Something that just pops and hits you. And this album does that. It's super loud. Like fuck the dynamic range. I know all those foos out there are going to be like, oh, but Frank, I want to feel the crescendo of something going up. It's like... So yeah, my favorite tracks on this album are uh, Frozen Flame and Megaflora. Those are probably going to be the tracks that I listen to uh, in the future that I can see myself coming back to. So thank you, BB, for making a good album. I liked it. Uh, if you liked it, cool. If you didn't, okay. Uh, but what I'm, what I'm curious about is your next album. Like, Blank Banshee to me is like a virtual drug. Once you got the first two hits, it's like, I need a third one, and then the third one doesn't feel as good, so then you need another one, and then you just keep getting it, then you get, like, even bigger hits, and then suddenly you can't feel the same anymore, and, like, you're kind of driven by this lust of just wanting more. So, yeah, that's why I like you, Blank Banshee.